Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Friday. Since it seems like we're going into a bit of a quiet period over the next uh, four or five days or probably longer, I, I wanted to illustrate a little bit what's going on uh, with the uh, overall jet stream pattern uh, because usually I'll show it to you uh, with respect to uh, what the upper level winds are. And we'll, we will switch to that in a second. But I wanted to look, want you to look at it in a different way here. Um, this <clears throat> map is the hemispheric view so right up here is the north pole here's north america and back up through here on this side is the upside down eurasia um, and it kind of lets us look at the atmosphere in a sense from the top down and what what we're looking at here are areas of above normal temperatures and below normal temperatures and as we start out today you can see temperatures are below normal across uh, much of the midwest and northeast is like a little tongue of above normal uh, in the mid-Atlantic and southeast left over from yesterday's weather system and then you have this large area of very warm temperatures up through the Rockies and Plains and a little bit below normal along the Pacific Northwest Coast and you can see on the other side all across um, Siberia uh, and this uh, probably is it, it is most definitely related to the rapid snow cover growth that's been going on there and that rapid snow cover growth is uh, tied to the fact that much of the Arctic Ocean still remains unfrozen and is at uh, very low levels with regards to sea ice. But we'll get to that at an another time. But I'm going to just move this. I'm going to move this along. And you can watch how the areas of above and below normal change. And one of the takeaways that, uh, among others, that you should uh, get out of this is, first off, if we look up here in the pole region, there is a major warming event going on there. And that could have implications down the road with regards to um, blocking uh, because uh, warm polar regions uh, in the wintertime displace cold air southward. And as we move along, you can kind of see that much of the uh, U.S. over the next two weeks remains above normal. The only thing is that we have this pocket of near or slightly below normal temperatures uh, that shows up from time to time into the northeast and I think that's related to uh, the blocking but if you watch how these the areas of above and below normal move they basically tell, show us how the air masses are moving and how the jet stream is moving and if you look out in the Pacific <clears throat> right through here everything is pretty much moving from west to east we don't have air masses migrating from northwest to southeast and uh, Canada is uh, you know a lot of part, large part of Canada uh, showing above normal temperatures not unusual for that to happen it happened a lot of times uh, last winter much of last winter that was the case but um, we at least for the next couple of weeks um, are going to see um, kind of a quiet weather pattern overall now I'm going to put the jet stream pattern on here uh, the upside the upper level winds and here's the problem with respect to bringing colder air down. If you uh, take a look here, you know what, I'll get a tighter view because I think that that probably helps a little better now at this point. And we'll uh, do a little zoom action, make it a little bigger. And there we go. Okay, so when we actually show you what the jet stream is supposed to look like, um, you can, let me just get there we go. So if you look across the Pacific, the uh, jet stream pattern is basically a long fire hose, okay, that runs right across from west to east, goes across the country from west to east, and then out in the Atlantic. Now, there are little disturbances here along the way that um, bring down some of the colder air that we're getting because of the blocking pattern that's right up here and some of that colder air is filtering down into eastern Canada and eventually filters down a bit into the northeast so I think that probably says to me that yes overall the scheme of things we're going to probably average temperatures near or above normal for the next 10 days to two weeks or so um, but it's not going to be anything extreme uh, it might get warm for a day or two uh, then it'll get cool for a day or two but not anything cold and then warm you know warm up a little bit uh, for a couple of days uh, as these weak weather systems go by if you follow the flow along into western Canada you can see that the air is actually going in the opposite direction of where you would want it to go 
um, as far as uh, bringing down wintertime air. So when you look at it here, at, at a certain point, um, it kind of tries to um, create a, a flow that brings down a little bit of cold air from Canada. This is next weekend, and because of the blocking pattern, uh, you've got um, a weather system come uh, moving, diving southeast from the Great Lakes. You've got this upper air storm here kind of, of blocking it from moving straight east, so it may want to go more southeast, or at least the energy might want to go southeast. And here's your blocking uh, that's up through Greenland. But if you look out in the west, at least at this point, the upper level winds are coming down out of northwestern Canada, which brings in some slightly colder air. But none of this suggests that uh, we're going to see anything uh, with regards to um, wintry conditions or, you know, much below normal temperatures, at least through the uh, first 10 days or so of November. I've been talking about the possibility of a pattern change beginning around the middle of the month of November. I'm, I'm still uh, thinking that that may be the case, uh, given what I'm seeing happening um, in the upper atmosphere. Uh, we'll uh, see what happens when we get there. In the meantime, um, have a, a great Friday and a great weekend. And uh, make sure you check the website, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, uh, weatherlongisland.com, nycweathernow.com for Long Island local weather and New York City weather. And, of course, for storm chasing, it's ssstormchasers.com.